planet-wide magnetic shield is the only thing that stands between the Earth and blasts of ionized plasma from the sun. Mm. But there are times when that protective shield doesn't work. 1859. A British astronomer named Carrington notices a large solar flare. It is so powerful that two days later, it sends an electromagnetic wave across the face of the entire planet. So aurora for the 1859 storm was visible essentially near the equator. So think about Samoa, you know, even in Panama, there's reports of campers in the Rocky Mountains waking up and starting to cook breakfast because they thought the sun was rising. So really spectacular aurora across the globe and visible from, from most of the globe. The Carrington event caused telegraph lines across America to short out or burst into flames. But in 1859, electricity was a rare phenomenon. The gigantic Carrington solar flare had little effect. In today's interconnected world, the same type of solar storm would do more than create auroras. It could create an apocalypse. If a Carrington-sized event were to hit North America today, the cascade of collateral damage is enormous. Imagine it is tomorrow. While you sleep, while the sun is on the other side of the Earth, men and women still monitor its surface at the Space Weather Prediction Center. They see a coronal mass ejection erupt from the sun. It is 100,000 miles across. It contains the destructive power of 10,000 nuclear weapons. And it's heading straight toward Earth. Traveling anywhere from 1 to 5 million miles an hour makes that 93 million mile trip in just under a day to several days. The satellite belt gets the first blow. The GPS system can be disrupted. Telecommunications can be disrupted. All kinds of things start occurring on Earth because we so much depend on our satellite system these days. Minutes later, the solar storm hits Earth's magnetic shield and overwhelms it. The first sign, lights in the sky. As the skies light up, darkness falls across an entire continent. If a huge coronal mass ejection were to hit, this whole power plant could be fried in just a few seconds. Electrical lines turn into antennas, overloading transformers across the northern hemisphere. Power goes out everywhere. Telecommunications will go down. The internet will go down. TV, radio, GPS, weather satellites will all be wiped out. Then power stations will be short-circuited. There is nowhere to get backup power. Generators will only last until they run out of gasoline. But without power, gas stations will not be able to pump. It means that food riots will take place in a few days because refrigerators are going to go out. Commerce will come to a halt. Credit card transactions, transactions between banks, all of that will be wiped out. Power, water, transportation, banking and medicine all collapse. There will be no electricity, no telephones, no food deliveries, no working hospitals, no running water for three months. Six months, a year, even longer. In this worst case scenario, it may take years to recover. Because if you have a localized hurricane, a localized storm, there's help from the outside. The rest of the world is not affected. Here we're talking about the entire planet being affected by a gigantic superstorm. So far, the power of the Earth's magnetic shield has saved humanity from this fate. Magnetic shield weakens. The threat from a magnetic